please stay calm. Read this message in its entirety. I understand the difficulty of convincing someone they are trapped for their own good, but you had suffered an accident causing you amnesia. Through these letters, I will aid you in recovering your memories. When that occurs, you will be granted an exit and we will reunite. It is spring, 1917. The world is at war and I reckon the sounds outside have already clued you in. We're at the heart of it. I'm your fellow soldier, but more than that, I'm your best friend, your only friend. Before your accident, I was one of the two people left who truly mattered to you. It was horrifying. We were pushing forward under heavy artillery fire when a shell burst near you. The shockwave knocked you to the ground. You were unresponsive, staring right through me. I dragged you for what felt like kilometers until we reached this place a family home where I've hidden you. no use trying to convince you. You did not listen at all. My friend, what has happened to you? I cannot lose you like this, but do not worry. We will get your memory back. Your worst fear, the falsehood of the mind concluding that one can only suffer so much. You thought you have already served enough to the demonically powerful unknown force that adds mass to the already heavy rock you are pushing up the hill. You were wrong, and you ended up being selected. But worry not, my best friend, because I'm here. Whatever it is you're pushing through, I'm pushing through it too. I volunteered. I feel the need to emphasize our inseverable bond. Do you remember? A massive cave-in. And us, underground in a tunnel, each on the other side. All our equipment and supplies crushed to dust. You told me you yelled loudly, and so did I. But we both heard nothing. You squeezed the photo of your father. Determined, you headed to find a way back to me.
Using two wrenches and your wits, you rid the door of the padlock. Entering inside, you saw me again. There I was, already waiting for you. struggling, trying to not feel down remembering the school days. You really didn't deserve to endure the things you did. 1908. A fire broke out in our school. We were just 12. A fire as scary as is, let alone for children. But no one had it as scary as you did. A whole day of typical mocking and ridiculing for things you couldn't change. For things you couldn't have due to reasons you couldn't control. A whole day of being stolen things. A whole day of tiringly holding back tears and acting as if you didn't care. A whole day of that, followed by being trapped in a burning building by kids that deserve to have their places switched with you. One cannot even begin to imagine the fear that ran through you. The blazing fire, the alarm, the isolation, the loneliness. You knew no one was coming for you. You clenched the photo of your father and looked for a way out. to apologize most sincerely for hiding our friendship during school. But I want to say, your secret carved out messages on paper were genius, as was everything you came up with. you would escape this situation unharmed. But you needn't have worried, since even if you couldn't escape, I was already coming.
regrouped outside and waited for our parents to come for us. Some arrived earlier, some later. But you waited and you waited. You waited well past the last kid was taken by their parents. You have just nearly burned alive in a building and no one even shows up for you. Deep down you recognize you would already be home. Would it be for your dad? You waited for so long, you were eventually let home unsupervised, only to find your mother blacked out after one of her usual nights of being intoxicated. What you needed after that day was rest. Your arrival was near the evening, with your mother blacked out. You were hungry, but there was nothing to eat. Your clothes were dirty, but there was no one to wash them. You had homework to do, but even your last pencil was broken. And even though you were cold and there was no blanket to cover yourself with, you eventually fell asleep after the tiring day. You thought to yourself that, at the very least, you deserved to rest. But you would be mistaken, because in the middle of the night, you woke up to your mother making a mess. You start to tremble from both fear and the cold that blanketed you through the night. You start to hear her yelling as you clench your father's photo in your hand. Her footsteps echo through the house. You knew what you had to do. She mustn't get in. than not jumping at all. It was already decided and there is no going back now. You are running away and you already know the place. At first glance, a person may say that there is no good in your life. That would be an incorrect assumption. There is, it is your father. And at the end of the day, no matter how hard it was, 
You can always go to him. That's exactly what you did. You arrived at the place where he lives. You know it all too well. The silhouettes watching from the distance will try to scare you away. But you aren't scared. You know they will disappear when you reach him. Finally here, you lie on it with tears in your eyes, feeling the warmth radiating from below you. You clench his photo and close your eyes to enter a world where he is still there for you. more than anyone should ever have to. But every hardship you faced was necessary, a step toward this moment. The basement wasn't a prison, it was a place to protect you until you could remember and understand. It was a memory room. Now the worst is over. The struggles are behind you and only good things lie ahead. We've made it through the hardest part, and now we can finally move forward together. I'm waiting for you. <laughs>